Paying homage to the mecca of tobacco, Pinor del Rio, Cuba, Abe Flores opened his PDR cigar factory in the Dominican Republic over 10 years ago. Abe is one of the hottest boutique cigar makers in the industry today, earning the number 10 spot on Cigar Aficionado's Top 25 Cigars of 2014 with the Abe Flores 1975 Siri Pravada. Abe and his team use Cuban blending traditions in a modern boutique Dominican factory. Smoke PDR cigars and cut, light, and taste what they love to do. Brought to you by Rocky Patel Premium Cigars. The sun-grown Maduro is hand-rolled at Rocky Patel's boutique factory in Esteli, Nicaragua. This triple-capped, hand-bunched, and hand-rolled cigar is accompanied by a gorgeous broadleaf wrapper. Well-balanced, rich, and decadent, it truly is a great addition to any humidor and worthy of bearing the long-respected sun-grown name. For more information, visit them on the web at RockyPatel.com and be sure to follow Rocky Patel Premium Cigars on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Welcome back, everyone, to the Stogie Geek Show. That's right. This is our Stogie's of the Week segment. A crowd favorite, as it were, Will, because we tell everyone what we think about the cigars we've been smoking which people base to go pick out cigars in their favorite retailer, which I, I know, is great. I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm it's just a honored. lot of responsibility, Will. I'm, I'm kind of, I have anxiety about this segment, right? Because it's I a always, lot of responsibility. I, I always do, and but I'm, I'm always really touched too when I hear people take a recommendation, whether they put a tweet or something on Facebook, saying, "Hey, I saw this on on Stogie. I just saw something yesterday about." About the Guayacan cigar from uh, Burns Tobacconist that someone yeah. just put out there. And You're just... right, Will. You, people post on social media or email us and are like, hey, you guys both rated this cigar very high. And I went and I, I found it and I bought it. I spent my hard earned money on this cigar because you guys recommended it. So I, I, I take this very, you know, we have a lot of fun in the Story Geeks, right? But I take this segment very seriously because people are going to go spend their hard-earned money based on our recommend recommendations, which is um, uh, very flattering for me. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, so I'll kick us off, Will. Speaking of hard-earned money, uh, this is certainly not uh, an inexpensive cigar. It's a Davidoff Grand Cru Number Two. We've talked about the the Davidoff Grand. Now uh, it's interesting, Will. On the little barcode, it said Grand. With a D, I've also seen this presented as Gran, G R A N without the D. Am I, am I just am I smoking crack or what? I believe. No, I mean I. Now you got me. It is. I believe it's Grand. Grand with a D. I believe it's Grand with a D. Because sometimes I refer to it as a Grand Crew Number Two, yeah, or Number One or whatever the the. But I. I actually just did. I just did a Google search, mm -hmm. and it and it came up both ways. Both ways, right? Um, yeah. Um, no, but the answer is I'm wrong. No, it's Grand Cru C R U. C R U, but what's the Grand? Is it with the D or just without the D? With the D. I'm with sorry. Yes. With the, with the, I keep saying with with the D. Yes. Okay. That's because I is think on the that that sticker that is on the cellophane comes from the manufacturer. It comes from Davidoff, so that's the name of the cigar. Yeah. yeah, but I saw a Google search kind of come up both ways. But yeah, it is. I said it right the first time. Grand with the with the D. And this is a very old blend. This has been, been around for a long time. Yeah, that's uh, that has been around. I mean, as long as I can remember. As long as uh, we can remember, this this blend has been around. Um, <clears throat> sometimes this blend is like really awesome, like box worthy rating for me. Um, I think that depends on size. I think it depends on age. I think this blend kind of reaches its peak, right? For me, it's never it's never bad. It, 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 and I always give props to to Hank Kellner when I talk about the Davidoff uh, brand. And sometimes for me, this this blend in sizes in different ages, is like a fiver, um, which is where this number two fell for me. Um, sometimes for me, it's more like a box worthy, uh, or sometimes better. This commands a very high price tag, but I think it's one of those, um, it, it kind of exquisite exclusive blends from Davidoff. 
Um, I think putting it in the upper echelon of that really awesome, mild smoke with great flavors. Um, but sometimes it can be better than others. And I don't know if you've experienced that with this blend as well. Yeah, I, I would agree with you. It's a, it's a milder cigar. So if you're looking for a lot of body on this cigar, you're not going to get But the flavors are very good. Um, and it's in depth, again, going to different sizes. I've had that number five, which is a Petit Corona, which is a fantastic mm. short, mild smoke. Um. <clears throat> yeah. So I think your mileage is going to vary depending on um, how well or not well this cigar has been aged. And that could depend on your palate as well, Will. Some people may like this blend when it's not so well aged. Some people may like it when it's a little more well aged, depending and then the size factors in. Um, but I think it's a solid, a solid blend. I think it's overlooked as far as the mild cigars go uh, in the Davidoff line because I think it has some more body than some of the other offerings in the Davidoff line outside of the Grand Cru, like the Thousand Series. It has more body than, than the Thousand Series, right? Yeah. I would, I would agree. It has a little more body than that. I'd say it's in that mild to medium range. And <clears> to <throat> mild, yeah. I'm never disappointed when I smoke this in the morning with coffee, Will. I'll put it that way. No. Yeah. Um, so this one was a fiver for me, but I've had other ones that I've been really super impressed with. Yeah. But no, it, carries, it carries a high price tag, too. So you get a factor that is as well. No, but it's it's a great it's a great cigar, it's a really good cigar. Absolutely. Back to you, Will. So, this cigar is a cigar that it came out in September, and I thought it was good, but it it reached a level of awesomeness recently. Um, is that the Sombre Mesa? No, okay. no, it's it's the Tatawahe TAA 2015. Interesting. One of our listeners slash readers, a guy by the name of Charlie, and he was raving about this cigar. Now, I had it back in September, and I thought it was good. But this cigar just reached a whole, like I said, it reached another level. Um, so for folks who don't know, this is the fifth year that Pete Johnson's done a TAA cigar. But what he did is he went back to the, um, the box press Toro size from the first year, which is 2011. So that box press Toro size is a five and five eighths by fifty four. Um, this is a Connecticut broadleaf uh, wrap blend over a uh, Nicaraguan binder and uh, filler. And I I've had mixed reactions with some of the the Tatawahe TAA. I did not like the two thousand fourteen as much. I liked the twelve, and actually the eleven <clears throat> didn't really wow me, but it did wow a lot of people that eleven. But this fifteen, without a doubt. Pete knocks it out of the park with this one. Um, it is just, it's got all those classic broadleaf flavors. It's got the chocolatey flavor. Um, it starts out with a little bit of a rougher, grittier feel, but it really smooths out in the middle of that cigar, um, and it kind of keeps it right into the end. It's, I'd say, a medium to full cigar in terms of strength and body. Um, it's a box-worthy cigar. It's probably the best TAA cigar I've smoked in the last two to three years. Nice. And I've been I've been underwhelmed with a lot of the TAA so like, but this one, it's it's without a doubt, and it's one of Pete. I think Pete last year you could say he had a little bit of an off year. Uh, I'm not, you know, and he's yeah, had some. Very, but an, an off year for Pete is a fantastic is year for some other people. So that's where I was going with <laughs> yeah. exactly. So, but I think this one, um, this was this was really one of his best cigars he's done. Now, uh, now Pete aside, and Pete has put out some of the cigars that I hold in in my own personal opinion as like some of my favorite cigars in the world. Um, so just you know, let's put Pete aside uh, in in my uh, assessment. Some of the cigars that came out at the end of last year, Will, I'm smoking now and noticing. A significant improvement after they've had some time to rest, and that's why I mentioned Sober Mesa because that's the cigar that I smoked um, last night when I did the uh, sharing your pairings. Right, and I noticed a big difference. Like, it, it's not that your cigars are going to get like better, right? I think there are certain characteristics that will improve the experience of your cigar. But it's not going to make like a really horrible cigar a fantastic cigar. 
But in a lot of these cases, like we see with Pete's cigar from TAA, well, which you said, yeah, he smoked last year and it was good, but it's much better now. Um, I think that the flavor and the balance and certain components of that cigar will improve with age, as, we, as we've said on the show. And there's a lot of blends that came out late last year. They hit the market. And then now we go back and we smoke them now. It's the end of January. And we're like, wow, like that cigar's really improved. You know, like the, um, the flavors have melded together. It's allowed that cigar to, to be a lot more well-balanced. And I'm able to pick out a lot of the flavors that the blender intended. Sombra Mesa did that for me. And it sounds like this cigar did that for you as well. Yeah, like I said, it was, you know, this came out in mid-September, and right off the truck, it wasn't, and I did smoke one right off the truck, it wasn't bad, and I kind of sensed it could get a lot better, but I um, I had another one I put aside, and like I said, Charlie, who, and he's just, I, he has a very good palate, and he, I, I said, I have to smoke this thing now to see where, where it's at, and, and he was he was spot on, by the way, I did pick you up one of these, Um, I actually nice. was able to get a few more, so I did pick you up one, um. <clears throat> Also, because you you need to smoke this cigar, um, you know, it's funny. I was talking to Stogie Santa, and and he was hearing a lot of good things about it. He didn't quite understand it. I went back to him. I said, "Hey, look, Mark, this smoke is this, again. this is legit. Yeah, yeah, this I could see why people had this cigar rated high." Um, one of the cigars that I smoked this week that was really um, it's really a shocker for me, uh, and you know, to preface this, will. You know, you kind of have to put your personal feelings aside as to some of these cigars. We develop, you know, personal relationships with the people that blend these cigars. Um, and uh, Jose Blanco is certainly one of them uh, that we develop a personal relationship with. Uh, and I have to put that aside. And in certainly in some of the other sizes, it hasn't shined for me. Um, the Los Cumbres Tobaccos uh Sonorial, and this is the Le Grande by Jose yeah. Blanco. This is the 60 ring. Um I I will say that this is one of the cigars that could have benefited from a little more humidity in my humidor will. Um however, having said that, it produced tons of flavor in this size. And I was just really impressed how much um, this 60 ring really presented all those characteristics, all those flavors. I mean, it had like this kind of like, it went a a little in the like kind of like woodsy notes, a little bit in the uh, citrus notes for me, but just it had an awesome, very smooth and balanced flavor profile that kept my attention. And to have a 60 ring be in that box split category right it almost rates the cigar higher right because i mean like uh, it, it's a six by 60 will yeah it's a it's a big cigar and so to have like a whole half a box of a six by 60 like that's a lot of smoking time uh to have in my humidor really puts this cigar like you know take the box split rate box split rating and put it almost at a higher level because it's like a really big cigar that i would have a lot of them because it smokes so well and you know, I had some like wrapper cracking issues, but that's because my humidors right now are a little low on humidity, and I, they, it could have used some more uh, in that. I could totally tell as the way I stored the cigar that was some of those issues. Even working through some of those issues, when I focused in on the flavors, I was like, "Wow, this is a really great cigar." It's just all around well balanced, great flavors, awesome uh, characteristics throughout this cigar. I was, you know, Jose Blanco has made the 60 in, in the Senorial, and he's done it in the Maduro. Jose Blanco could make a 60-ring cigar, and both of those cigars, I'd agree with your assessment on that, on that Le Grande. Um, and then the Maduro may even be closer to box-worthy in that. And Stogie Center agrees on the 60 in the Maduro. Okay, so he, I, I thought, you know, in, after I rated this cigar, I was like, uh, you know, I remember Will and Stogie Santa talking about the scenario being really great in these, in these big ring gauges, and I've smoked it in the smaller ring gauges, and I'm like, it, it's one of those blends that I'm like, he really, really did a great job in the larger ring gauges. It, he, because he's such a connoisseur guy, yeah, those big ring gauges get very, very overlooked, 
And I'm going to say this. If you, if you are a fan of Jose and his blend, you, you owe it to try those 60 rain gauges. You are going to be real surprised with them. I'm glad I, that I did, yeah. I smoked both of the 60s, actually, at the last two blending seminars. This year, I, I, last year, I smoked the Maduro, and the year before, I smoked the La Grande. And I told Jose, I said, these are really good cigars. Yep. So, I, like I said, try, you will be real surprised with those 60 ring gauges. I would buy a lot more of the Sonori on the 60 ring. I'll tell you what, I really enjoy sm- I enjoyed smoking it a lot. Yeah, no, it's a good cigar. Back to you, Will. Well, on the big ring gauge kick, um, I smoked. Uh, I, I reviewed the Maduro of this a couple weeks ago, but now I'm talking about the natural in the EP Carrillo Inch, and it's the number 64, which is the six and a quarter by 64 um, inch cigar. So, what I'll say is, you know, again, these cigars we've talked about, they're blended the Four big ring gauges. The inch line is that's what it's designed to do. Yep. Um, and, and that being said, it, it's got a lot of it's got some nice flavor to it. It's got a cedar and a nut flavor to it. Um, this was a cigar that I was a little frustrated with the burn on it. Um, it was a little bit of a flaky ash, um, but then it, it had more. T- and again, I think I was touching it up more than I should have, maybe right. But but I thought it was a good cigar. I thought it performed well for a big c- ring gauge cigar. I'd still reach for the Maduro. Over the natural, mm-hmm. um, and I'd still reach for this maybe in the 62 or 60 ring gauge over to 64. But um, this is a good cigar. To, and if you are someone who likes a big ring gauge, I would rate it a fiver for that reason. No, I, th- I, I agree with your assessment, Will. I think the, um, the inch line is a great large ring gauge uh, line. Um, probably works a little better in the, the 60 or 62, right? Yeah, and he's got a seven, yeah. and he's got a seventy in these as well. Yeah, I haven't smoked yeah. a seventy. He does a great job in the large ring gauge. He, like I said, he's done that for years, and like I said, this is a blend that this is what it was designed to be. Mm-hmm. So, and it works, you know, is what I'm gonna say. Um, like I said, I, pro- I probably had a little more preference for the broadleaf Maduro on this one, but but still very no, I good agree. stuff. I agree. Yeah, yeah, the broadleaf Maduro definitely produces a lot more flavor. Uh, I'm, I'm going to Cuba for this next one, Will. <laughs> this was, uh, uh, those of you who tuned in last week, uh, Dave was here. Uh, he's a, a friend of ours, a friend of the show, and uh, he loves Cuban cigars. N- nothing wrong with Cuban cigars uh, I- in terms of evaluating them as cigars on their own. And this was a, a St. Louis Ray, and this is a Regios. This is yep. a, a Robusto style cigar. And I tell you what, uh, I lit the cigar up first thing in the morning. It was my first smoke of the day. I paired it with a cup of coffee, and it was just an outstanding smoke. And that's one of the things I love about the Cuban tobacco is how versatile it is, how you can get all of those flavors and appreciate them, whether it's first thing in the morning, middle of the day, or later in the evening. Um, Just those classic Cuban flavors. Uh, it's really hard to put a description behind it, right? Other than it's a lot, it's that cedar component coupled with, I don't know, maybe a little bit of sweetness. Like it's just really hard to put your finger on it. Classic Cuban flavors, smooth and balanced. Um, I rated this box worthy. I would light one of these up like every morning, dude. Interesting. No, I, I, I don't think a, this is a, a, a. Go ahead, Will. No, it's a good cigar, by the way. I've had that one. It, it's, it's something that, like, I mean, you buy a box of them, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed for a long time. Like, you're going to smoke when you first get them up until the time when you, you go through the box, and you're going to enjoy them the entire time. I don't think they're a high price tag either. No. No, I agree. No, I don't. I'm not sure what the price is on that. I don't the think they're, head, but they're I, not like Cohiba, you know, same, price yeah. or really high price tag on them. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I don't think so either. Yeah. So that that was definitely box worthy for me. Nice, nice. Back to you, Will. Well, I'll go Cuban as well. Um, Ooh, I nice. smoke. Yeah, I smoked the uh, Ramon Ayones um, Club Ayones Edition Limitada 2015. Ooh. Say that real fast. You you never you you're not huge on the reviewing the Cubans, Will. No, but this was a newer Cuban. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a limited. My buddy, uh, my buddy gave me a couple of these, and um, I was really curious to light this one up. Um, a lot of sweetness on this cigar. Um, 
I said this is a, definitely had some sweet note. There was an herbal, nice herbal component to this cigar as well. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Slight amount of spice. Um, it, I'd say it was a medium, medium, you know, medium strength, medium body. Yeah, um, and, and you know, I find the Cubans will to be medium strength, medium body. Yeah, you're not yeah. gonna. Yeah. Very rarely will you get something outside you know, of full, that. Outside of that, mm -hmm. um, I would put this right in the middle. It's kind of if you go yeah. one to ten, these are five. Um, you know, overall it was a. Uh, it had, like I said, it, it's not going to do a lot of change-ups along the way, but enough flavor nuances that kept my attention. Um, I gave it a box split. This was a nice, this was a nice uh, cigar. It's a very uh, weird shape. It was, I, I said, it is, here's the size of this thing. It's a five and three-tenths by 47. Wow. I guess it's a Corona Gorda. I guess yeah, that's, yeah, a, yeah. I guess that's what you put it, or it's a short Churchill, you could say, but that's a very short Churchill if you go 47. So I'd say Corona Gorda, but... Definitely, uh, like I said, newer Cuban. I got my hands on. I think it went to Europe most of it. So, uh, and, and that's why I know when my friend was trading with someone in Europe hmm. when he got these. Yeah. Nice. Yep. I smoked the uh, Letelier uh, Racine from 2015. Stogie San is raving about that cigar. I wasn't high in the cigar, Will. And it he was interesting. Big Pete, Stogie Santa were all raving about this cigar. I only smoked one for this review, and I mean it has some, you know, some nice kind of rich tobacco flavors. I thought it was somewhat one-dimensional, and I rated it a fiver. And I don't know if I need to go back and try it. Like whenever my friends rate it really high, and I don't kind of get it, I feel like I need to go back and try it. But I wasn't really high on the cigar. I actually prefer the previous year's uh, Racine, and this is the third. Is this the third? <laughs> This is the third, yeah. There yeah. was a Toro, and then um, last year was a Bellicosa. I I prefer the original and the, the previous year to this one, to be honest with you. I mean, I thought it was a good cigar. I mean, it wasn't bad by any stretch of the imagination. I just, you know, it was a fiver for me. I haven't smoked this one yet. Um, I did like the 13 better than the 14. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's uh, That's one of those IPCPR releases. Um. I, you know, I don't know if it's a cigar. I know they only sell it to people who go to the IPCPR, and, and I like that they do that, but I just don't know if it's enough to make me want to gravitate to it. I thought that the the 13, I, I ranked that really high. I like that, that was, cigar a lot. That was great. That yes. one was great. Yes, I agree. Compared to the other two. The, the, yeah, the this Bell one just didn't, didn't wow me. I mean, it was yeah. a good, good cigar, but it just didn't wow me. No, I, I could I could see that, and that was the, the you smoked. This was the Lonsdale. Lonsdale. Does it come in different sizes? Well, every year they change the size. Okay, yeah, this so, is the Lonsdale size. Yeah, yeah. so the, 50, the ER fifteen is the Lonsdale. Hmm. Interesting. Back to you, Will. Um, I smoked a a real um. This was a real surprise out of M Bombay, and I and I saw the guys in a cigar corner smoking this cigar. Um, and then I got my hands on it from Mel, and it's the M Bombay Corojo Oscuro mm. in the Perfecto. Um, this cigar, it's it's got an Ecuadorian Corojo Oscuro wrapper, an Ecuadorian binder, and a filler of Ecuadorian, Peruvian, and Dominican. You don't see Ecuadorian in all three components a lot. Oh, that's, that's a very interesting, yeah. But it's got the Peruvian in there, um, which, and I'm going to tell you. You get, you're gonna get that Peruvian tobacco in this thing mm -hmm. real good. Uh, there's a floral note in this thing, but there's also some cedar. There's some, there's a nice cocoa note in there. Um, a lot of the woody note that you'll get in here as well, it, uh, like cedar being like kind of an enhanced woody note, but you also get like a more of a generic woody note. A uh, lot of change ups with this cigar. It's a, it's a complex cigar. The Perfecto just. Um, is a fantastic size. It's actually the Perfecto is a five and a half by fifty, which I like a Perfecto in that size a lot. Um, this cigar was was it just hit on all cylinders. Um, it may be this is this is like the hidden gem in Mel's line right now. Um, I gave it a box worthy cigar. Uh, it's a, it's it's also a very full bodied cigar, so you're gonna get a lot of flavor off of it, but you won't get overpowered with strength. This one you got to check out on this one. I think I got a couple more of these from Mel, so I'll get them to you as well. Awesome. It's uh, really good stuff. Will, 
Unbanded number four. I didn't do mine. <laughs> oh, I like made a point to smoke mine today. I know, and I screwed up. I meant uh, to smoke it earlier today. Dude. <laughs> do you want to just do it or? Uh, wanna... No, let's wait till you smoke it. I'm sorry. That That is. Uh, I didn't make yeah. any notes on it, though, because I thought we were just going to talk about it tonight. I did. Yeah, I, I, I goofed on that. Um, but I didn't. I need to get. Well, we'll talk about that because I, I wouldn't. Have, I don't have the answer on it anyway. So, OK. OK. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I did not smoke it. Uh, I screwed up. And that was probably why I didn't smoke it, because I, I got this. I was waiting to get that back. So we'll go back to that. OK. So we get another unbanded coming up. I did smoke it. Yeah. So, next show. Uh, I smoked a God of Fire Siri Anniversario 56. Um, so this is in that like like five pack sample right, that I got, right. Will. Yep. And yep. I got two of those smaller ones. I got this was like the medium sized one. There was two right. of those, and then it was a really large one. Yep. Um, this one was just not that great, to be honest with really? you. Yeah, I was a little surprised. Like the I smaller s- one was really good. I would smoke more of the smaller ones. Right. I smoked one of these. Uh, I think it was today actually, and the flavors were just kind of muted. Like it really didn't, it didn't have enough character to really like keep my attention. It, it definitely got better as the smoke progressed, but in the larger sizes, um, this one just didn't work. And I ready to try one. Interesting. It like Interesting. took too long to get going. Like by the time I got going, I was like, I was done. You know what I mean? Yeah. And for the price point uh, on this cigar and being a special cigar, like I expected more. You know. Like, it shouldn't have taken that long to get going on the cigar. I agree. Um, so, yeah, I ready to try one, dude. Wow. Which is rare for me for, a, a like, a limited um, Fuente. Uh, yeah. It, yeah, it just wasn't there, dude. It wasn't there. And that that's a limited – God of Fire is a limited. That's a pretty limited God of Fire. It is, yeah. Yep. yep. Yeah, stick with the smaller sizes. I mean, a lot of times the retailers would get these sample packs – um, if you go to uh, different retailers, you will find these. You can buy them by the box. Um, if you find the smaller size in this God of Fire, definitely buy like at least a five. I mean, if you got the budget, buy a whole box, right? But I mean, like the chances that you'll be able to have that opportunity and the, the money that would take is a lot. Yeah. Uh, uh, but I would definitely pick up more of the smaller size in this line. Interesting. Back to you, Will. Um, Blind Man's Bluff. The uh, I smoked a Corona Gorda. Wait, which this is, is not Blind Man's Puff. This is Blind Man's Bluff. Blind Man's Bluff. Did you see that the uh, the guys from Blind Man's Puff? I guess they went. To, it's by Caldwell. They went to Caldwell's booth. And I don't think he knew who they were. Yeah, and they kind of gave him a little crap about the name. Yeah, um, it's confusing. Yeah, but it was all it was all in good jest. Actually, they took mm. a funny picture of it where I think they somehow put the name Puff over Bluff <laughs> in the photo. Yeah. That's pretty funny. Yeah. But uh, I smoked a Corona Gorda, which is an exclusive size of this, the Burns Tobacconist in Chattanooga. Um, and this is a... I was a little indifferent on this line. Um, it's an Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, Honduran Criollo binder, and then a Dominican... Uh, and Honduran filler, and this is being made at the Camacho factory. Hmm. So Caldwell was working with, this is what he was talking about on the show with that. And Burns got an exclusive of the five and three quarter by 46 Corona Gorda. Um, great cigar um, in this size. Uh, I think this, this size, it was a nice um, for the Corona Gorda. Um, it had some notes of uh, pepper, cedar, had a little bit of a straw type note in there. A little bit of citrus for sweetness and a little bit of coffee flavor in that. So there's, there was quite a bit going on in there. Um, it's a medium to full, I'd say, cigar in body, maybe medium in strength. That kind of it gets a little stronger at the end. Um, I found that the Corona Gorda had a lot more complexity than those other sizes of the Blind Man's uh, Bluff. And that, I think that was where – so I think it really worked well in this size – and it's not often that a shop exclusive is my favorite size in a line, mm-hmm. but this one was. Um, and I gave it a fiver. I probably would have the others more as a try one, but this is more of a fiver. So it's a, it was quality cigar is what I'll say. 
uh, on this. I was sold on this in the Corona Gorda. Definitely worth having five in the humidor. <clears throat> my my last cigar here, Will, is the Undercurrent Shade uh, in the Toro size by Drew Estate. And I have to say that I'm really high on this uh, Connecticut. I really do like this Connecticut line. Uh huh. In this particular size, though, I wasn't impressed. Like, See, I thought the one, this was the size you liked. So no, it was. I this particular one I did not like, and I I don't think they sent us more than one size in this line. Okay, yeah, I think they. they yeah, yeah. Because I remember the robusto being very, very good. See, I think I sent you the Robusto. Okay. I think that's what happened. I sent the Robusto. Yeah. I like the this... Robusto a lot in this line. I think that the Underground Shade is a great blend. Um, I enjoyed it in the Robusto. I would smoke more in the Robusto. In this Toro size, I found as a – and this was the largest size I smoked in this line for sure. I remember that. I remember thinking – This, is, I, this I never is the smoked, biggest one. Yeah. I, like, I never smoked an Underground Shade in this, in this, you know, this big – and I'm like, well, I'm going to give it a shot. And the flavors just kind of got muted for me, and I, I rated it a try one. But uh, to go on the spectrum of our ratings, like, I remember the Robusto <clears throat> being much, much higher in my scale. I don't remember what I rated it, but I'm like, I would smoke the Robusto a lot I think you were closer more. to box split. Yeah, it? yeah, I rated it much higher. Um, yeah. It just didn't work for me in the Toro size. And, Not, and some people may gravitate towards that. They may like something that's really... Um, really mild <coughs> in your Connecticut sizes, um, but in the Toro size, just didn't do it for me. Yeah, and that's you know, we've 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 hit this point a lot. That's why you don't size dismiss matters, the, right? Yeah, you don't dismiss the line. If this was the no. first one you had, yes, you, you know we we were busted on Stogie Sander about it last week when when we were talking about a particular cigar that we were reviewing. And he, Absolutely, and he, gave, and he gave you the look, and you said, remember, you said you haven't smoked this size. You're right. doing exactly what we tell. Right. Yeah, yeah. And he, yeah, he, he admitted it. Yeah. But it, it goes from like bigger picture to like so. You're like, well, you know, I smoked the cigar and I liked it, and like I'll get looks from people, and I'm like, well, have you tried that line from that manufacturer? And they're like, no. I'm like, yeah. okay. And then I'll be like, well, I, you know, I tried this cigar, and they're like, well, oh, and they give me the look, and I'm like. But you have to try that size in that yeah. line from that manufacturer. Yeah. And they're like, no. And I'm like, well, that's like one of the reasons why we exist, right, as Togi Geeks, is right. to give you that, that opinion. And it, sometimes, you know, we rate cigars that we don't like as much as others. And that may be kind of a gravitation into your wheelhouse or not, right? Like maybe you tried the Reboost or it wasn't in your wheelhouse. So... I'm telling you to go try the Toro. Maybe that's the one in your wheelhouse. You know what I mean? Exactly. I'm giving it a try one. Uh, and it, it works the other way, too. Like I'm saying, I really like the Robusto. Maybe you try the Toro, and you're like, Ugh, I really didn't like it, so I'm going to dismiss that whole line from that manufacturer. It, and that's not the way to be. You know, no, no, it, You have to listen to all of our ratings um, wherever they fall on the scale and work that into your rotation. Um, and for me, personally... I like the Undercrown Shade and the Robusto, and I do like this blend. I think this blend is awesome, but your your size is going to matter. Yeah, I mean, like I said, we this line's come along well, and we've had a lot of good. But yeah, you know, but you're it's not like that with it. any blend, right? It's not yeah. just the Undercrown Shade from Drew Estate. It's it's any blend. We talked about the Sonorio. I liked it better than the Sixty Ring. Right. Who would have known? Like, and, and, you you would have liked that in the Sixty Ring, right? And it's I talked about a really high end. Fuente that I didn't like in the larger size, but I liked in the smaller size. And there are other ones that I like in the larger size rather than the smaller size. You got it. That's the whole thing that I'm trying to instill on people when you listen to Story Geeks is that the size and the blend and the manufacturer all kind of play together and don't dismiss any of those factors, right? Oh. Don't no. say blanket, I don't like this size. Don't say blanket, I don't like this blank. Don't say blanket, I don't like this manufacturer. Because guess what? A manufacturer may make a blend in a size that you're really, really going to like. And you're going to miss out on that unless you listen to what Will and I and the rest of us say in the story geeks, to be honest with you. Yeah, I mean, we talked about that Rocky Patel 20th, right? And I made my cigar to your list at Lancero. And well, I got Lancero more. Was que- awesome, dude. That I was got an more. Awesome I got more questions on that. But everyone who questioned it, no one smoked that Lancero. 
I said, you got to smoke that Lancero. Yeah, I'm like, have you smoked it? Yeah. yeah. And it's, and it's, it, I'm telling you, exactly. that's what Rock, that's one of the best cigars Rocky's done in a maybe, you know, long time. Right. It, it's uh, amazing how far reaching that um, kind of like preconceived notions goes. Like, oh, you know, Fuente, I'm so like, oh, I'm over, for, you know, like, well, dude, have you smoked that God of Fire in that small size? No. Yeah. <clears throat> so how can you say that? Yeah. You know, and then, you know, it could be the opposite, too. You know, you like a brand, <laughs> and then you you say you like the size, but, you know, you really, you liking the brand more, or do you like the cigar more? Right, so, right. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't just have brand loyalty because of brand loyalty. Be, have it because you like that cigar, you know? It, it, it's interesting, as, as, I, as we progress here on the Stewie Geeks, like, there are brands and sizes and flavors and manufacturers that, you know, I may have had preconceived notions about, and we smoke them either on Bandit or we smoke them because I'm like, you know what, I got, I'm going to review the cigar, and I'm going to take everything off the table. And there are cigars, dude, from, like, flavored cigars to, like, sizes I would never smoke to blends that I, I, I don't think I was going to like because they have tobacco that I think I don't like that I'm like, oh, I really like that. You know? well, look at that Drew Estate sampler was a great example of some of the Perfect cigars example. that Perfect we, example. you know, and yeah. we were fortunate enough and thankful that they sent us some of it because yes. that opened us our eyes up to a lot of different things. Um, in Absolutely. That. Um, not it, just the flavored stuff either. Yeah. It, and I'm not saying my palate is the same as all of our listeners, right? But um, certainly I think what we want to instill upon our listeners is to try things, yeah. you know? Try that that size that you may not smoke. Try that flavored cigar you might think you might, you know, you know, if you don't like it, you don't like it, that's fine. No one's going to fault you for that. But what I really enjoy is when someone who maybe likes one particular size or one particular wrapper or one particular manufacturer, and I'm like, they listen to us, and they're like, ah. All right, I'm gonna try that, and then they really like it, and I'm like, oh, we're doing our job, right? Of right. making people kind of branch out, and you know that could even be price point, will you know, like, oh, I don't want to spend more than five dollars on a cigar, or I only like to smoke, you know, Padron, but you know, Paul and Will are rating this other cigar, and they're saying it's really good, so I'm gonna try, it and they really like it. That's what's really rewarding for me is to have people get out of their comfort zone. And, and that's one thing that, like, Stokey Santa really instilled on me, right, was break out of your comfort zone, dude, right? And I watch yep. him with people in the in the retail store, um, and, and he really, like, tries to allow people, not make people, but allow people to break out of their comfort zone. And I think that's what's really important about this show and about your retailer, um, is to allow you in, in to give you that comfort to break out of your, your own comfort zone. Yeah, I would say absolutely. That's the best advice. I mean, that, that hits in the heart of what we're trying to accomplish here, right? Especially with this segment, right? Yeah, yeah. Try stuff. Yeah. Try and, stuff. And, here's the, and you know what's funny? If, if you don't agree with us, let us know too. I mean, it's certainly... Yeah, if you, if you think we rate a cigar high and you're like, that cigar is terrible, we rate a cigar low and you're like... This cigar is awesome. Well, tell us, you know, yep. I mean, because one of the things that uh, gives me uh, a lot of confidence in what we do is that we're not only are we afraid to try something, Will, for the first time, I'm not afraid to go try something again either. Right. Maybe right. I missed it the first time. And a lot of that I get from like you and Stokey Santa, if, if you rate a cigar differently than I do. Whether, you know, whether in either direction, it doesn't matter. Like, maybe you guys rated a cigar that was really bad and I really liked it. Or maybe it's the other way around. You guys rated a cigar really great and I didn't really like it. Right. I kind of take it upon myself to go back and smoke that and really pay attention to to reaffirm it. Because maybe it was the cigar that I smoked. Maybe it was the the way it was stored. Maybe it was what I was drinking. Maybe it was what I ate that day. Maybe my palate, my own palate was dry that day. Like, whatever the case may be. Uh, it, it just encourages you to go try cigars. And look, the great thing about go trying cigars is you're relaxing and have a cigar. So how horrible can it really be? Right. You know. Right. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. Here's the last piece of advice: don't don't assume that the size. We say size matters, but don't assume one size is going to be better than the other. Because in a like different we, blend, right? 
We just talked about the, the Senorials. We've talked about the yeah. Abos. Really good in the 60s. Yep. Um, we talked about then, other ones that are really great in the small ring gauges. Right. And the other really, ones that are really great in the Robusto. Really great in the Perfecto. Like, it, you can't – I don't know. It's weird. Cigars are kind of weird for me, Will, because it, you can't really develop a favorite based on – Things that are easy, easily like distinguishable, like you can't develop a favorite on a size, on a wrapper color, on a manufacturer, or even a brand, right? Yeah, yeah. Like there's so much difference between them, you just gotta try them. I agree. I was learning that with Scotch too, right? When I did the sharing of pairings, I was like, you know, there's Speyside, there's Highlands, there's um, uh, Lowlands, there's you know uh, Isla Scotches, and they're all very different, right? But it's the same thing. Like, there's some great scotches from Highland Park that are awesome. Lagavulin tends to be very, very peaty. But, hey, they make this, like, limited edition of this other one that, that isn't so much that I really like. So, it, it, you just got to, in these finer things in life, you got to be willing to experiment. Is the I agree. Moral of the story. Totally agree. Cool. Well, I'm done, Will. I think we're done. I'm glad we instilled some of that, uh, our thoughts on that too. I think that was yeah, no, important. I, that was really absolutely, important. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, it was a good show tonight. Yep. The same thing with food, man. When I was, a uh, quick story, when I was out with uh, my coworkers, they wanted to go eat Indian food. And dude, I love all food. Believe me. I love right. all food. Food is awesome. I just don't like Indian food. And they were like, oh, we're all going to Indian food. And I'm like, I'm going to try it. I'm like, oh, tell me what to eat. What's your recommendation? I was texting my wife. I'm like, I'm going out to Indian food. And she knew immediately. She's like, oh, man, that sucks for you. She's like, I know you hate Indian food, right? And I'm like, tell me what to order. Like, what do you think I would like? And she made some recommendations. And I liked it. You know what there I mean? There you go. Yeah. So, I, you know, you got to keep an open mind, I think, in life with these uh, things that are in that, like, I don't know, it all falls in this a similar kind of category, right? Like with food and beverage and, and cigars. I think f for me in, in coffee and whatever it is, it falls in that, that kind of range where you just, you got to have an open mind. Yeah, definitely you do. You definitely do, especially with what we're doing. Absolutely. Yep. Well, who do we have on the show next week? Enrique Sanchez. Nice. Yes, comes back, and he's got a new cigar um, that's about to hit the store. It's called the XO. Um, so we'll be probably talking about that. Very cool. And then, and then we are recording tomorrow. Oh, uh, very exciting. A big game, Stogie, the first Stogie Geeks big game show where we're going to talk about the big NFL matchup between Denver and Carolina. That's right. Uh, we'll talk about what our picks are for that big game. Who yeah. we think is going to win? Yep. We're going to talk about that on the, on the Stogie Geek Short, which um, we're going to air during the big game, so you can watch that uh, yep. on that particular Sunday, yep. and uh, you'll you'll get to hear our picks for that game. And La Florida Medicana is going to be on the show. We we have John Carney for sure. Yeah, and they're providing and, cigars for us for that. Which are coming tomorrow morning. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's going to be great. I can't yeah, wait for so, tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, there'll be a lot of good. I think it'll be an interesting segment uh, with you guys from New England. And so I mean, I know there's going to be a lot of postscript on what happened last week. Um, it's all good, dude. We can talk football. It's fine. Yeah, it's all good. I heard a little talk last night with. The we did. I we yeah. had a very honest conversation with John. It was we good. Very football. good conversation. Yeah. 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 And, and people could be surprised about my my pick. I'll say that. So interesting. Yep. All righty. Well, well. Thanks right. everyone for watching. We'll see everyone next week on the Stogie Geek Show.